1215, we're on time. We'll call this meeting of the Downtown Design Review Committee to order. Will the clerk call the roll? Yes. We have Chair Truesdale. Present. Vice Chair Heiser is excused. Member Schlotman. Present. Member Abramo. Present. Member Nolan. Present. Member Bratcher. Present. And Member Mooney. Present. Thank you. This meeting has properly been posted and in compliance with the open meeting law. Yes. We'll go to item three on the agenda, which is public comment during this portion of the meeting agenda. It must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard, give your name for the record. Time may be limited on this. Maybe we should speak in this portion of the agenda. Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, item four, possible action to approve the minutes of the meeting of May 21st, 2013. That's right. I move for approval. I'm going to be staying on this item as I was on President the last meeting. Second. Okay. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, would please note uh, Commissioner uh, Schlotman uh, abstention. Yes. Now we go to item 5, ARC 49619, DDRC public hearing action or applicant owner, Ike Gaming Inc., for possible action on a request for a signage design review for an existing hotel casino with waiver of, to allow no exposed neon LED animation or combination of these on a proposed wall sign where such is required to have at least 50% of the surface area. 600 Fremont Street. Um, Mr. City Attorney, yes. uh, being a, a partner and manager on the said property, uh, I will abstain on voting or commenting during this item. Great, I would recommend that too. <laughs> Thank you. Just a disclosure, I've known the applicants and the representatives for quite some time. Um, However, I have no business uh, in the past or present or uh, the foreseeable future with any of them. And uh, so uh, with the exception of charity work, it's all concluded. So uh, seeing those items, I feel that I can go ahead and vote on this. And, and just for the record, Mr. Chairman, uh, I have spoken with uh, Member Schlotman. Uh, he's indicated to me that the business of judgment is going to be compromised by his a relationship with these applicants, so I've advised that he's able to vote. Okay. And just for the record, just I've known these two applicants, and I've known um, former member the applicants since kindergarten, since they were in kindergarten, not since I was there. But, um, <laughs> it's a small town. Yeah. So, I, we understand. As long as your independence doesn't compromise. My, no, my judgment's not in, in affected in any way, shape, or any business interest in any way, shape, or form. Then you're fine to Okay, thanks. Um, where were you on the night of 17? I also <laughs> yeah. And actually, uh, Dig um, does reside in my building, so the, uh, the architectural firm. Oh, okay, so. I've never seen these ladies in my life. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Bratcher? Yeah. The first time I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> Again, just for everyone, just as long as your independence of judgment isn't compromised by your prior knowledge of these individuals, you're able to vote. No. Okay. Um, staff. Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting approval of two wall signs that are on a newly painted mural on the south elevation of the El Cortez parking garage that do not contain any illumination and thus require a waiver of 50% beyond LED and or animation requirement. Sign A is a 24 square foot painted sign in the upper left hand corner that contains the hotel's logo on the image of the keychain. And sign B is a 32 square foot painted sign in the lower central portion of the mural that contains the name of the hotel on an image resembling the Fremont Street signs located throughout uh, Fremont East. As the signs could be designed to meet the downtown entertainment overlay district illumination requirements, but uh, are not. Staff cannot support the waiver and therefore recommends denial of the request with conditions of approved. Applicants. Okay. I'm going to speak on behalf of uh, 
Uh, my name is East Hill Ohio. I uh, represent Jay Design Group. And if you will refer to the mural that is on your page SD02 or on the separate handout, uh, we believe that this piece is more of an art piece. This mural is 26 foot wide by 48 foot wide, and we designed it to enhance the camaraderie of the city. We feel with everything that's going on downtown that this only works for the downtown redesign and redevelopment. Uh, this is really in, your, in pure humor. It's just for photo opportunities. It is just artwork. So we would ask that perhaps we be passed and um, allowed to paint this on the building because it is not to, um, it's not for the upper test for marketing purposes. It's merely just art form. We also think that the timing of what's going on downtown and with the redevelopment and with all the interest in the city, that this could really help the cityscape and um, the camaraderie and help the community come together along with the like, this beautiful um, aspect of the uh, community. And everybody's just really excited. And I feel like this just uh, you know gets that momentum going and it's just a really fun thing. We just don't think that those two are moments, you know, really, um, you know, are for propaganda. It's really just for culture and, and uh, general enthusiasm. I'd like to add also, the logos that are depicted in the photos are not any of our currently used logos. They're more of the art element of the picture, of the mural. And, you know, I think everyone knows we painted the building the last year and a half, and, and uh, this was part of the overall project. We just got it completed. So everything's painted except for the El Cortez here and here. And so we just want to add that final element. Um, we have... I would say well over 50% neon on that side of the structure building. We have plenty of neon on our on our building, and as you can see, neon wouldn't work in this, and and it's not intended to be a sign. So, um, us two would ask that the committee allow us to finish this uh, artwork off. Can you state your name for a record? Yeah, my name is Joe Woody. A partner and chief financial officer for the El Cortez. Members, comments, questions? Was this, book, um, was this designed um, along with the like this beautiful people? Is that where the like this beautiful term come from the bottom, or did it just so happen to show up on there? Oh, no, it, it, tend, it originally had kind of a gesture of good faith and goodwill into the community, and um, this also happens to be taking place. It's a, taking place in October. It's representing music, art, culture. It's taking place in the middle of downtown. The Upper is at the center of that. And for this, really, uh, to go on what Gisela said, this is a symbol of art and bringing the community together. That was just kind of a gesture of goodwill to, to also reach out to the Life is Beautiful folks. Right. And it's also in keeping with the original design of the building. Exactly. It's a 1940s, we, 50s uh, we need, piece. We need I have your name for that. I'm also the and, and why is the street sign considered part of a commercial sign versus public art? Uh, for clarification, Mr. Chair, with your you, uh, the Fremont Street sign is just artwork. But it would be the El Cortez name um, in the lettering, instead of Fremont, obviously. And on both places, so on the upper left corner and down below on the street sign. Down below on the street sign, so it's El Cortez? Yes. So it did not say El Cortez. Did you say Fremont? Then it would be art. There's, there's a fine line that we went through um, with emergency arts, um, rather interesting debate actually, but um, between where we get into commercial speech and where, which is a sign, and uh, art, which is pure art, and I know that sounds like a lot of differences, but uh, it's very important from our city city uh, design, sign codes and with the super graphics or, uh, ordinance 
there there's some other issues that are that are out there that relate to this um, and I think you know some of the logos here the life is beautiful those aren't commercial messages those are those I understand to be art um, the two logos or the the two El Cortez words the keychain and the even the street sign fall within what we would classify as commercial speech uh, how is this illuminated is it like lit from the top or or is there any illumination to it there's no additional lighting on the sign okay. I, I, I have a clarification or I mean, I'm asking for a clarification so the issue is um, not the entire mural just the El Cortez being painted correct on the mural the mural oh, is not assigned and in fact it has been painted already it's the two El Cortez words or symbols whichever you want to call it that's what also, it's which amounts to commercial speech which amounts to commercial speech and that's the reason staff is denied or I'm suggesting because it's not illuminated as signs are required to in this area of the city and how do we there's a, another issue with regard to art and when it has commercial speech in it um, it's how this could be changed over time it, it could be redone with different uh, logos once once we're there we're there and that's that's the, the big question mark here that's why the the illumination question comes up because the pure cost factor to go and redo neon is is the trigger that usually prevents um, reworking of the art on a regular basis. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. just a couple quick comments. One, I want to thank the applicant for going through this process because the majority of people who do painted wall signs don't ever come to the planning department. Number one. They just put up a written message or some type of art with a written message, and it just all of a sudden becomes there. It's never never been permitted, never been approved from a uh, city standpoint. So we have a very difficult section of code where we don't really allow painted wall signs. But the reason the applicants here today is because they came forward with this mural. It contained two what we determined to be commercial messages, the El Cortez writing. And with that, staff had no, no nothing else they could do except basically recommend it now because the way the code is written is any new sign. We all know the El Cortez has some of the most iconic signs downtown, but the way the code is written today, it's any new sign <coughs> must be 50% animated. So when it was presented to staff, we, they basically had no recourse except to go through this process. And luckily we have this process to go through when we can actually, as a board, look at them individually and make a recommendation as whether or not to waive the illumination. Now we had the same thing last month with another applicant that came through uh, La Camita. And I think the consensus of the board was based on the frontage or, you know, the artistic intent, we were able to waive that. But there's many people out there who never come before the board. And basically, a painted sign, when does it become art? And the dividing line for staff is always when there's a commercial message. So if I have a Apollo meat market and I go up and paint Apollo meat market with just letters, to me that's not, a, that's not art, that's a sign. But if I have Apollo, it looks like the air, the rockets and all that fun stuff that might go along with it, um, parts of that might be art and other parts are commercial message. It depends on the individual sign. So I think we're kind of stuck right now until the code changes or we decide to change the code with this process, especially for the downtown entertainment overlay district. Um, but with that, I think they've done it in good taste. I think it matches the, uh, the garage, which was painted, obviously. Um, I do have a question for staff on <coughs> Condition number three is approved. I understand the intent of the condition. It says all signage, including temporary signage, shall have proper permits obtained through the Department of Building and Safety prior to installation of any proposed signage. And in this case, I'm not so sure that it applies because I don't know that you'd be able to go down to the building department and pull up a permit for a painted wall sign. Hmm. So I'm going to ask that we strike that condition and actually I'll make a motion for approval with that condition to be stricken from the approval. That's what I was saying. Before you 
complete your motion. Just no. a question. And uh, if this is changed, if this if this mural gets changed, where does that leave the city? Does it have to come back before us? Well, it currently has the Cortez logo on it, or they're going to yeah. paint that on there in addition to what's already painted on the side of the building. It's not on there today. On there. The, the murals are the, the, the El Cortez. So they would not have to come back. I mean, I'm, I'm presuming that they were going to create that El Cortez exactly as it is represented in this in this sign. It's on this exhibit. That was the intention. Okay. Let me, let me stretch this to the what if. Okay. Okay. What if you guys tomorrow decided to put a mural and call this El Cortez, Bugsy's original house? We, we would have El Cortez on this. It would be an ultimate commercial message. It would be a, a billboard very similar to some of the billboards that the hotel has done around town. Um, um, that's, where, that's where we open up Pandora's box. And I, I like this. Believe me, I do. But once we, if we don't have some of these minimum standards that get there. Uh, La Comida was, they had, a, they had existing signage. It was, um, it was actually a sign. It was not art. They, they didn't purport it to be art. It was um, a sign that we tried to figure a way to, to make it acceptable to the, the district down here. Uh, my big concerns are is the tin can or the excuse me the container city across the street could have an unbelievable amount of art that suddenly becomes signage and we lose any kind of reasonable control so that was one of the reasons that um, pushed to the the argument with uh, emergency arts where they at least we we limited the other commercial messages that they wanted to install, and they installed the one piece of neon, which added, or the, you know, added uh, to the sign graphics, but it made it made it more permanent, so it doesn't it isn't as easy to change. I don't want to spend a dime of your money because I don't want people to spend my money if I, but it would give us some control moving forward if there was one of the El Cortez was in a neon format it, it, then it's not a quick change then it isn't just the mural then we don't it's not art tomorrow and it changes Does Ch chairman is there is there a way that we can stipulate in, in approval that the artwork is as presented and that it doesn't change and the approval is you know, dependent on that, that, that and commitment. That, and that's condition number one. That's condition number one. Yes. And that's condition number one. I mean, arguably, that uh, this this mural was done by, you know, locally famous artists, and that, you know, it's it's the entire thing. And I, I, I don't know, I don't think neon would look good on this sign. I don't. I have a question for Scott that I'm trying to figure out. Um, so there's a tremendous amount of neon on the north side of the buildings, sorry, south side of the building. But if you look at a continuous, a continuous panorama of the El Cortez, is that correct? There's plenty of neon. That's correct. So why would we consider looking at the percentage of neon requested and look at this as a holistic approach to this, to, to the El Cortez? Uh, advertising. I, I don't see this as a standalone. I see it as a panoramic view of, of a hotel that inclusive of as much neon as currently on this on this panoramic view is more than fifty percent. So I, I I would I would challenge you guys or staff to uh, to rethink that just in, in, in that thing. I, I don't see that being problematic. Uh, to um, to Chairman Truesdale's point, I think if, if 
people just start putting painted signs on buildings is one thing. But when you start looking at at what has been done and how iconic the original neon sign is and how that's part of an overall uh, structure, if you will, I see the 50% being met and exceeded. That's my, my personal opinion. And I, and I agree with you. I, I, I agree 100%. Um, if this was a master sign plan for the whole, all the signage and, and it was presented holistically, um, every little mom and pop property owner downtown that Mr. Slotman deals with, I deal with, they look, okay, here's this. I can go paint my windows. I can go paint my, my alleyway. They. This applicant is familiar with the system and understands what has to happen, so they, they file it appropriately and come through. Uh, it's, it's where this goes awry. And uh, I just I just want to make a clear record. I, I, I truly don't oppose what they're doing. I'm just, it's the unintended consequences of what we do around here that, that becomes you know, the, the adjacent property owners are going to look to this sign for their signs to see how they can actually put signs on the side of their building. So they may say, well, why don't you let that guy do it? And I can't do it. That's so, be the problem. Well, the cascade well, I, well, just a comment on that. As a member of staff and also of this board, I mean, downtown is littered with illegal signs that we choose not to enforce. I mean, it's a complaint-driven business. Sandwich board signs are not allowed anywhere in the city. And if there's sandwich boards, you can walk up City Hall here and we aren't trip over them. Now it's a matter for staff that has limited budget to actually decide what are they gonna go after. Now the neighbor to this building might see this sign and go to put one up. And if he does so, he's more likely to get a code enforcement action and be forced to come through this body to get that sign approved. Or they would face the consequences if they didn't get it approved, they had to remove it. Um, it's not the applicant's fault for knowing the process in my mind. Again, this is one of 100 people that came to us we have signs everywhere downtown, which are basically illegal signs. Um, so the city is incapable of enforcing its own laws, so we shouldn't enforce them at this level. No, I think. I mean, I, I for agree. staff to say that, I got to tell you, goes way off the off the rails. <laughs> what, I'm saying, <laughs> sir, what I'm saying here is that there are numerous illegal signs throughout the valley, throughout downtown, and also, it's a matter of code enforcement for those signs to be brought to our attention. Just as it's dangerous and buildings are abated, those buildings are noticed and then they go through on an agenda and, and the action is taken on to, re, to eliminate the, the, the dangerous situation. Um, the signage is not as dangerous and I don't know that this, I don't work for code enforcement, I never have. I know they probably have 12 inspectors for 120 square miles. Um, you could be writing sign tickets all day. You sure. Sure. But I mean, speaking from the legal aspect of it, I don't think just because there are a lot of legal signs, you should have one more legal sign to the, to the mix. So, I mean, either staff needs to change the code to maybe reflect what the, the member is saying in terms of that was my first you know, take a totality of the number of uh, illuminated signs that this property has on it and take that in totality, or... Well, know, if you go back to the record, record, what I said first was the applicant had no other choice except to come because it's a new sign. The way the code is written, a new sign must be 50% animation, regardless of what they've done. They could have had 100% animation on the entire building. Sure. This new sign would have generated a new... Request. And I think that that argument that he made would have made sense had there been some more illumination on this side of the building. There's nothing on the other side of the building where the signs actually paint it, so, from what I can see. And, yes. and one, uh, we, we have not been able to uh, get through one potential litigation with regards to the super graphics. Right. Again. If this was pure, if you call this pure art, it's a mural and we allow murals in a lot of different avenues. In fact, come over to the Naked City and watch, we seem to love painting empty buildings with murals. I don't know where that gets us, but we do it. Um, but on the super graphic side, that's why I, it's important to call this a sign, because if it, fall, if it is perceived as a super graphic, then it's not even waivable. But but that's where it could be perceived. So I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to find out how we get there reasonably. I mean is there could there be any spe special consideration because this isn't just some property and this isn't just some existing neon. This is a 
you know, reference to a historical building, even though it's on the garage, which is not the historical part. I mean, could there be any way to consider this historical art or preservation? Could it be considered special because it is the El Cortez? Um, speaking as an artist and as the piece, and hopefully not sticking my foot in my mouth, like, it's just important for the whole piece, especially the slower part, that it, do, that it does reference the El Cortez um, for opportunities that closest to the street walk and for, um, you know, memories and photo capturing and, and I just, especially the bottom part, I feel very strongly for that and I, it just, it feels like this is more, you know, it's more than just some building. It's, it's, it's something that's been a part of our history in downtown for so long that I feel like extra special consideration, not just because I'm asking for it, but that would want to happen. That you guys would want to do it. We're really excited about this piece. We're really excited about the momentum that's downtown. And let's not look at it as something that, like, you know, oh, well, what is everybody else going to do because we allowed to give this away? It's more like, what are we going to do to really say we care about history, that we care about something that's been here for so long? And so, you know, how can we technically now make that work for us? <laughs> because I just, I. Yeah. Which there's, there's a big equal protection problem with that. You can't treat somebody, somebody different because they are who they are. So you have to treat everyone exactly the same in the city, regardless of who they are and where they're situated. Well, what do you, you have laws in the city that because you, we've been here so long, this building, but... That's called grandfathering, but this is brand new. So had this beside been up 50 years ago or whenever this hotel was created, different story. Mm -hmm. uh, but now this is a brand new sign. And I it respect that. It it's not grandpa. And I respect that. It's, it's more just about the reference to the art and, yeah. and to the architecture. Mr. Sure. Uh, just a few comments. I, as we move forward and we see more and more applicants coming before us, if let's say XYZ Bar wants to open across the street from El Cortez and they bring us a mural just with their logo at the top with no neon anywhere on their building, I think we would have the ability to say no. Um, because we're allowed that discretion on this board to say, you know, yes, we will approve something or no, we won't approve uh, whatever it is. If all these mom and pop stores, I mean, we, we have a big problem with illegal signs all the way up and down Charleston, Sahara, Las Vegas Boulevard, um, and code enforcement so, so far behind um, that we'll, who knows if we'll ever fix our illegal signs and uh, sign spam uh, issues that we have uh, today. But with each new business that comes up, and that area is radically transforming, we'll have the ability to analyze each one of these storefronts on a case-by-case um, -case basis. So if they come up with just a mural, with their business name, if the Griffin come in and said, hey, we want to put up a mural and just have this and no neon, no sign, we could say no. However, if they come in and they have a mural and a sign, animated, neon, and their name was on part of that sign, I think we would have the discretion to state yes or no if we wanted that in the future. But you probably need to come up with some very specific criteria by how you're going to judge those things. If you're saying that the El Cortez can only be, or the whatever logo of the company can only be on a sign, that's, I don't know how big this thing is. 48 feet tall. 48 feet tall. <laughs> there are certain buildings that are not 48 feet tall. So you're going to have to come up with some design criteria by which you're judging and determining that that name of that company or that logo can be on there and not represent commercial speech and be part of the, the overall art project. We could, um, however, whoever the motion maker is, if they make a legitimate argument for why they would be voting for this and they have that within their motion, um, since there is a denial from planning, if they have a well-crafted motion on why they're uh, allowing this uh, mural to go forward, if that so be, if it's due to the El Cortez and the El Cortez having uh, you know, a mile worth of neon all the way around their building. For these reasons, we would be approving this because there is plenty of right. neon. Then I think that's legally defensible. And, that, and that's not a criteria I'm thinking of. That you need to okay. something to kind of justify. You have to. Why you, have to you have to make substantial arguments why we would we would 
waived from our, our standard code, and you need to have those arguments built into the motion that are defensible by our legal counsel, so their neighbor, um, whoever it may be, uh, uh, the building right across the street, the brick building, the uh, building place, doesn't come up and say, I want to put up uh, a 40-foot picture of uh, Paul Newman shooting pool. And we're stuck with something we can't say no to because I understand each item stands on its own. But uh, it's a preponderance of items is how I could get a, an attorney to do battle with the city. And that's that's where we want to, that's the only way our strength of our codes work is if we're detailed how we we find reasons to approve something. Right. I guess I, my comment would be the criteria has been established by code. The criteria is if you have a new sign, it has to be 50% animated. If you choose not to provide the animation, you have the right to apply for a waiver, which is what this applicant has done, just like the applicant last month. It might be the applicant a month from now that does the same thing. If the direction of the board is to change that criteria, we should go ahead and talk with staff and work towards that. But that not necessarily should impact this applicant who's gone through a process. But, but what's the criteria for the waiver? I mean, is, is the waiver, is it what Trinity's saying, indicating that there's sufficient amount of neon and signage on you know, the remainder of the building such that you don't need it here? So what what are the waiver criteria? The criteria to date has been the appearance of the building in whole. That was established last okay. month. Okay, if that's the case, then that's... Well, that's my opinion. I don't think I have a different opinion. But you just said we just created a... Uh, you we, just created what we said we didn't want to create. We said we because we did it last month, so now we have to do it again. Well, there's then, better ways to do this. Well, we I'm, not, I'm not in the position to craft a motion, but there's a better way to craft a motion. But I think it brings up the point that Lock and get approved on their signage. Did. So, so that'll be the same thing that the next person said. And again, when you look at these in whole, if, if let's say the 601 Fremont came in and it had a painted wall sign that we disagreed with, I think this board would recommend denial. And it would be appealed to city council for the existing code. Like I said, I would make suggestion that if you're going to do this and make a waiver of this nature, I think you need to come up with some staff needs to come up with some more uh, viable, you know, concrete criteria by which they're going to judge these signs by. Because you're going to just be real subjective on these signs after a while and not really figure out what you're doing where. So well, actually, I, I think La Comida was based on um, having neon signs on the building. Oh, okay. Uh, it was just the percentage, and again, I'm going to go back to the percentage of neon required based on these uh, on these signage requirements. Um, I would I would suggest that we as a board recommend that a lot of people want to buy their buildings downtown in a, an appropriate way. And I guess my point will continue to be, and maybe I should make the motion for this, but um, based on the amount of neon that is currently on the El Cortez. And based on the fact that this, in my opinion, is part of the El Cortez's signage package, even though it's been done uh, over the last um, 72 years, um, that staff consider that as more of an, uh, an approach to, to the neon requirements. Because what I'm hearing is arguments saying that a neighbor can just go out and paint a sign with their, well, they can't. We have the ability to, to 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 deny that if they put fifty percent of the if they put fifty percent neon on their signs and they want to do a mural with their name, then I'm assuming we would approve them. So again, I'm looking at this 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 particular case as there's plenty of neon on the building. Um, they want to add some additional signage, even though it's at a later date, and to me it makes sense to allow. Them. I don't know if Mr. Gonna... Chairman, to, to a member of all those points, speaking on behalf of staff, I would rather have an objective code that says a certain number or percentage of signage that needs to be illuminated and then have the committee decide whether a waiver of that is appropriate based on some criteria that you come up with I just think if, if staff has come up with something that's murky or subjective, um, then 
we'll never hear the end of the arguments. So I would rather, if there was some extraordinary uh, circumstance in which staff could recommend approval of a sign such as this, then we would. You know, and that's, that's the way that it works for variances or other development waivers in the code. In this case, objectively, it doesn't beat the 50%. And they could actually provide, you know, whatever the aesthetics may be of it, but they could actually provide the required illumination on the sign. So staff doesn't have any choice but to recommend denial on this particular sign. But the committee can discuss it and decide to approve if they wish. And then to uh, member of Rapture's uh, request to strike condition number three, I just want to say that that condition is in there to catch other signage that may not be permitted at this time so that that could get taken care of before any new signs are put up. And that's the only reason for that condition. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Thank you. I'd like to make a, a motion for approval of ARC 49619 with the basis of the waiver being that the commercial message that is on the mural is less than 20% of the building elevation square footage, which is the standard in Title 19 for wall signage. Do you want to add anything about the additional neon or not? I want to add nothing about the okay. additional neon. Can you rephrase that? I'm sorry. What, what are we the, 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 existing code, the existing zoning code allows 20% of your wall elevation to have a commercial message. This sign, in conjunction with other signs on the elevation, would be less than 20% when measured. The commercial message itself. Right. So it's, I'm in favor of 4% of the mural. 4% of the mural, but it's probably less than a percent of the entire yeah. elevation. So the motion would be that we approve the waiver as requested, and the basis for that is that the 20% of sign elevation at is permitted by code is not being exceeded by the commercial message that's painted on the mural. So I just want to clarify. Yes. That standard is not applied in this case um, because this is the entertainment overlay district. So we're, just to be clear, this is a standard that's being applied that would apply elsewhere outside of downtown, but not that's necessarily. Not, it's not considered under the, the downtown overlay. Okay. Right. Would, would you agree that the standard downtown is exceeds 20%? Oh, yes. So I'm using a more, more restrictive standard. Correct. Thank you. I have approved that. A second? Any other comments? Questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. And not that I disagree with the sign, I disagree with your rationale. I think there was a better there's a better uh, technological answer to this, but um, it is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When you guys make a poster out of it, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, I think it's a great copy. Great graph. Uh, again, thank you so much for your guys' decision and for now we go to that item of the agenda, citizens' participation, public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to the matters within the jurisdiction of the committee. No subject may be acted upon the committee unless it is on the agenda and it will be limited. Any comments, questions, any, any further input? I would Before we close the meeting, I guess, yeah. Thank you. Yes, yeah, still public. I just think we need to have a session with staff because this is not going to work going forward. It's just more and more popular. I mean, it's just not going to work. Well, the, but understand, being popular doesn't mean we throw the, lock, the codes out. Being popular means we, we find legitimate reasons to get there. But once we open up commercial speech, you as a planner would know. This... You can't unring the bell. 
They can come back tomorrow and the city attorney will take. And the whole, the whole graphics could be changed where El Cortez will be fill up the whole sign and we won't win that battle to, to, to reduce it and it won't be the, the period graphic that you see before us today. Well, at least we know this is that there is a condition that said it must be yeah. in a particular drawing. They have to come in for a new application. Or an amendment to this one. Right. I'm going to raise another, I mean, just an example. This body also approved something on past which I was against where we've allowed wall signage on buildings for the actual tenant improvement to not apply, even though they're on the same parcel. But generally speaking, the, the signage is required to be on the building where the use is. And we've done it in the past, and that is a slippery slope. Yep, and I did it, and that's great, and I'm happy. Right. But I will tell you, when, when you start to put little holes in the code, and people like right. myself, people like Mr. Schlockman, there's no hole in this code. But, but what I'm code, saying is once you get approvals, it, you start to open up. Developers will find the hole that you think you covered. And this here could have been a, this could have been approved as a period graphic tied to the historic character of this, even though it's not historic. We could have limited to that, I mean, just, we, we could have just talked about how we are, this doesn't fit our code as much, and but yet we still want to do it. I think by approving this, I, I truly believe that Mr. Scott will get an, an argument from Mr. Shea to take the um, uh, the shitty casino that you guys just own. I'm sorry, oh, <laughs> Gold Spike, and it'll have a graphic on it that'll be a Zappos shoe with a Zappos logo in the end of a tennis shoe, and. And they'll send 40 attorneys down there and say, God, it's art, it's wonderful, God, love it, and look at the historical character of this tennis shoe. And you'll be sitting there going, well, we did it before, we're stuck. No, what I'll tell them is you have to come through the process like these guys. Yeah, but and we have right either throw the process out and say... But you better have addition, sufficient rationale to deny it, otherwise right. you will get sued. And the thing is, but you got to make that thing right. Then I'll go to a council for an appeal. And then I'll go to court. Then I'll go to district court, and a judge will tell me what my signage is. And once a judge tells me that's my signage, your laws are worthless. The codes are worthless. Judicial zoning is the end of what we do in this community to make our community greater. And I'm sorry, but I find that at the staff level within the city of Las Vegas is where we seem to want to eat away at that. We. I know in the redevelopment, would you like somebody to win a, a zoning case that says they can do what they want with their parcel because then you don't get any say. They can build it. They can do things. I've seen this in other communities. It isn't pretty when, when the city loses a case like that. It's like dealing with the homeless down on Fremont Street, dealing with the beggars. We, we've taken so many shots feeding people in the park. We, we've done every we're case wrong that we far. can. We're getting a little far but, up the agenda. But what I'm saying is... We don't, I don't want signs to be a judicial approval because once they get there, hell, I couldn't tell you what I could do with this sign in this, this area as far as marketing what I wanted, what this business would do. Well, I think this fits. We all agree what was approved today is that sign, nothing different. If they change it, they have to come back to this body. He he, well, he's about the next guy. I understand that. That's what he's I, can't, I can't hold an applicant for something before we might do in the future. But then so there's still sitting on the building to make don't. sure that they're following the code and make sure that the waivers that you're granting are there's some rationale behind the waivers you're granting. The waiver we granted last month in square footage is less than is more than this one. But the last month was never brought up as art. It was brought up as purely this is a sign in character with the period of the business and with the other neon it's it felt appropriate. It feels appropriate. It, when somebody sees it, they don't aren't going to walk down the street and say, "Geez, I can paint whatever I want on my building." That, and it's strictly a sign. It's it's not that blur between sign and art. Right. And come down to Naked City and watch the murals that go up. I mean, I go down there all the time. <laughs> okay, I think we're. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But okay. that being said, I think. I'm very respectful of what you're saying, so I do. Oh sure. sure. No, I just I'd like to just I guess better understand, I, I understand the intent of new signs get 50% neon, and, I, and we obviously work hard to make sure that, you know, the iconic art of Las Vegas is incorporated in all signs, 
or all the businesses that are promoting the businesses. My question still stands at this, is that how would we encourage owners, business owners, who have an excess of 50% signage to continue to beautify their buildings, uh, whether it's through art or some kind of murals uh, that would make most sense if, if they were still marketing their, company, their, their, their businesses. How do, we, how do we get them to, to, uh, to want to do that without having to put 50% more sign on, 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 on a new sign? Because I, I, I don't want to call it grandfathering, and I disagree with the fact that just this will open the door to random people going and put signage on. If, if there's a building with no neon, and they want to put a sign on, they're going to have to put 50% neon sign. But if there's a building with 80% of their building or their signage neon, and they want to add to that, then they need to take it into consideration. There needs to be a code change to make that as a as maybe a criteria in the waiver that you can consider these criteria. That's what I would ask that at least we discuss. So when we discuss that with staff, with a sign, sure. Yeah. Because that to me just that would encourage people to do not the nice things to their buildings without having the cost. Right. I mean, associated the only problem with that is there was no neon on that side that I saw. I mean, you the, the, all the neon was I guess. Just on the south the side. side. There yeah, was nothing to the sign. If I'm not right, if I'm right, it sits on Fremont and is angled towards the northwest, right? Ish. The neon wraps all the way around yeah, that uh, the west and south. Yes, yeah, on this side, except for the, the parking garage. On the other side. Yeah, the side. Yeah, it's on that. Well, the other problem. Well, the other side. problem is two brands are on different parcels. No air codes written. Yeah. Wow. Like, I mean, maybe you guys can like think of something as staff members to figure out exactly how to make this occur. You know, there, there are eight or nine or ten different uh, criteria by which this committee may make their recommendations. I could have somebody send a copy to you all just to refresh everybody's memory. But we could get more specific, and if you want to add something like look at the totality of the property in which this is located and come up with some kind of, kind of judgment that we could make relative to that. And I, I just think that would that would make it very clear, which is sure. to Chairman Truesdale's point, <coughs> we can't waiver, but we have to there's gotta be some common kind of sense in this too in reference to a holistic approach to a business. There may be something like that in there. It's just not as specific as you'd like it to be. And so we'll re-examine that. I might also add it's not just about the money and adding that additional neon sign. I think certain signs would look better without the neon. I mean, if the, if the property is covered with neon, then we cover the whole other side of the property with neon. I know that that's our intent to increase neon. On, right. Same and that could be a criteria if, the, if it happens to be next to a, a residential area that you don't put neon. I mean, whatever the criteria you're going to come up with, maybe have yeah. some, just have some concrete rationale that you can apply to. Right. Okay. What's, it, what's the district court or the federal district court in Seattle, or I mean in San Francisco? The, Ninth Circuit. Yeah, Ninth Circuit. Yeah. What, the way they treat commercial speech, right. every mistake we make will be a mistake <laughs> that we will never recover from. Yeah. And, and, and I agree. I, I like this sign. Believe me. We don't have any other mechanism right now to, to bring these forward. I mean, honestly, God, they could have painted this. Yeah. We never would have known. Yeah. And what would have happened? You would have known when you saw it. Well, you know, when you saw it, then what would have happened? Someone would have missed my point. Someone would have to come out and do a code enforcement action. Right. And then someone's going to get a call and not. That's. She's so bad. No. Yes. I mean, that's all right. I'm saying it becomes a, an item that now we have to go back and retroactive sure. and correct. Sure, sure. So the idea is okay. trying to get these guys into the process ahead of time. And that's what we've done the last two with Lucky like, and, and this one. But it wasn't exactly, it's kind of midway through the process. And I think staff can work this out. So I think, okay. all right. <laughs> with that, let's. Uh